Good morning, folks. We're starting down under where that tropical system we called out yesterday indeed got a name last night. It's visible up through the lower atmospheric layers and gaining precipitable water quickly. But also, it's now going a different direction than we predicted. The northeast shift has become a slide to the southeast, putting New Zealand in the crosshairs. We also have tropical storm development off the east of Madagascar, but which is expected to shift north-northeast over the next few days and possibly strengthen. Between equatorial summer heat and isolated surges of ocean moisture brought atop the South American continent, Brazil had a nearly nationwide blackout for a bit yesterday. Still have flooding and drought close enough together to wonder how the weather's being so picky. Hello to all my buddies down in the Falklands. Europe, that second low is the one to crest, doing so now. Channel travel was disrupted for a period, weather warnings flying out of the Met, check your local conditions as the low maintains its supreme power for the northern hemisphere. Such strong counterclockwise flow that hotter air is able to enter the Arctic Circle where the low rips hardest on their east cheek. Cold driven south behind it like we are used to seeing over the US as well. And speaking of, last but not least, we're watching a far weaker low in the eastern states today. This doesn't have nearly the force of the Euro low, but it's converging the different air masses at the center as opposed to a double low circling the air around. The weaker pressure differential is easy to see, barely a dark color shift, nothing like the Pacific low which is itself pitiful compared to Europe's. It's also not missed the southwest US dumping zone for extra cloud moisture coming south out of the Midwest, and again south along the west coast. They're going to meet in the desert tonight and challenge New England to a snow off. It shall be so. Despite failing to fire X flares, the big departed groups have put some ejecta into incoming space, but nothing on the SDO, SOHO, or STEREO validates NASA's overkill Enlil spiral here. I bet we barely detect the space weather variation and chances for storms are very low. Solar wind is calm. Got a couple odd density readings, but nothing that will cause sustained instability. Just look at the nice smooth gaining on the GOES magnetometer. Such a calm leads us into another. The sunspots are biding their time. First, let's go north. Remember yesterday we described the switch from spreading region to consolidated mix. She's doing a great job and may fire today. Then again, this thing down south should have been firing all along. It's not so bad without it as our magnetic connection to the spot is increasing our polar radiation worries. But unluckily for those sunspots, they came during the magnetic shutdown of our star. No doubt about it. Incoming groups are becoming worth a look. I bet one of those makes a play for power today. Let me do a better job trying to explain the solar magnetic fields. The loops connecting positive and negative sunspot umbras are known, creatively enough, as the umbral fields. You see them in orange on the all-field shot here. Above those are the coronal fields in blue, arching up and over large portions of the sun. Where coronal fields open, the positive or negative polar magnetic force of the sun may expel outward unabated into interplanetary space. Left side of the chart is facing Earth. Right now a big coronal opening is revealing one of the most powerful coronal holes we've seen in a while. This does need to be qualified however by recent solar polar field updates indicating that the force is generally weak on our star right now. Either way, it was the impetus for the earthquake watch that hit over the last week. Anyone remember these mid-watch lulls? They never last long. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.